Now to make hip and ridge out of three tab shingles, you simply cut one shingle into three pieces. And in a standard English cut shingle, 12 inch by 36, you'll end up with three pieces with each shingle. Each piece will give you a five inch exposure. So if you have a square, 80 shingles, you'll end up with 240 pieces of hip and ridge, each with five inch exposure. 240 times five is 1200 inches divided by 12 gives you 100 feet of hip and ridge for every three bundles of three tab shingles. Now, if you're using a three tab that's somewhat different than 12 inch by 36, like a metric three tab shingle, you're going to get a little different size hip and ridge, and you'll have to do a little different calculation based on the size of the shingle. When you cut your shingles, you want to make sure that you cut the head lap at an angle, because in a three tab shingle with the two slots, the head lap is going to be somewhat wider than the part of the shingle that's going to be exposed. And since the manufacturers often use recycled granules for the head lap, they may be a different color. So we want to cut them at an angle, and that way the head lap is always hidden, and the only part of the shingle you see will be the same color as the field of the roof. And it should be obvious that it's just as important to chalk lines when you're installing hip and ridge as it is to chalk lines for valleys, starter, and all the other parts of the roof you can see. Now you're going to want to use a nail that's about a half inch longer than the nails you're using in the field of the roof because you want to penetrate not only through the hip and ridge, but you're probably going to go through the layer shingles beneath it. And you still want to penetrate into the decking just the same amount. And if you're using shingle over ridge vent, you want to use a nail that's at least long enough to penetrate through OSB or plywood, or at least three quarters inch, into regular decking. Whatever hip and ridge you're using, you cannot use the same nail to install the hip and ridge that you've used to install the shingles on the field of the roof. One last little advanced tip is, when possible, you want to line the hip and ridge up so it laps away from the prevailing wind. That will make it much less susceptible to blow-offs.